Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. I work in technology and I absolutely love it. And hopefully you do too, which is why you're watching this video. You want to learn about RAID. What is RAID? You've heard of RAID. People that you work with perhaps use RAID. Maybe your friends have talked about RAID and you're going, what is this thing? Or maybe you just want to know a little bit more about what RAID is. You know a little bit, but you want to learn more. We're going to be talking about that in this video, so do check it out. Do also click on the subscription button so that you don't miss out on anything around all things tech. So we're going to be talking about RAID in this video. Now, if you are interested in learning more about technology in general, in my description below, in the video description, I've got a whole range of training videos. I've got links to a whole bunch, a whole bunch of training videos that I've recorded, hours of content around all things technology. We're talking about Windows Server, VMware, Active Directory, the Mac, IT management, and a whole range of more things that I know that you will find helpful. So if you work in technology, you wanna learn more, you wanna get that next job, you wanna improve in your career, do check out some of those videos. Now, let's talk about RAID. So to give you an introduction to RAID, let's look at a standard desktop computer. You get yourself a desktop computer. This could be at home, it could be in a business. You open up that desktop computer and inside of that desktop computer is a hard drive. It could be a two and a half, it could be a three and a half inch hard drive. It could be a SAS, it could be a SATA, it could be an SSD hard drive. It's a hard drive, it contains the operating system, it contains some data. That's great, most computers have got a hard drive, but then what happens if that hard drive fails? You lose all of that data. There's no redundancy, there's no failover, there's no backup plan in place if that hard drive has failed. You may have a second hard drive. So there could be two hard drives inside of this computer. One could be Windows 10 is installed on the, on the primary hard drive, and then a secondary hard drive contains all of the data. One of those hard drives fails. Doesn't matter that you've got two of them. They're not configured in anything special. You're gonna lose data. So one thing that you'll find that improves this is this thing called RAID. Now RAID is a little bit more complex than just these two hard drives in a desktop. And commonly you're not gonna find RAID in a home environment, you're gonna find this in a business. But essentially what RAID lets you do is a number of things. We're gonna be defining what RAID is, we're gonna be defining the different types or the more, the more common types of RAID. But it gives you advantages with having more than one disk where you can take advantage of things like redundancy, um, striping, mirroring, all of these things where you can have hard drive set up to give you better performance, to allow a hard drive to fail without losing data, to give you a lot more data by combining disks together. So RAID can do a lot of this, so we're gonna define each of these. But as I said, they're more commonly gonna be seen in a business. It's very, very rare that you'll find RAID in a home environment. The only place that you probably find it in a home environment is somebody who's a bit of a tech, like me, I've got a big rack set up, and that's where I've got RAID configured. Or if you've got a home NAS environment, you know, if you're watching this, you've got a small four um, bay NAS, then you may have that configured with a RAID as well. So that's sort of probably the only main reason that you may have one at home. But it's more commonly gonna be seen in a server, server containing a whole bunch of disks. Those disks are configured in a RAID or a storage device such as a SAN or a NAS, big device full of disks and pools of these disks are gonna be configured in different RAID groups. Now we won't go into a whole heap of detail. We're just gonna provide you the necessary skills and knowledge to at least understand what RAID is, the benefits of RAID, and also the different more commonly used RAID types. We're gonna be focusing on five different types of more commonly used RAID group types. RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10. These five are most commonly used in businesses, thousands of businesses across the world. There are other RAID types. There is RAID 2 and RAID 3, and there's RAID 50, and all these other sorts of RAID group types, but they're not as commonly used. So we're just focusing on these five 
We'll define what these five are, what they're used for, pros and cons, and give you a bit of an overview, okay? If you wanna learn more, there are other materials, other resources out there we can go into a lot more detail. But now let's start talking about what these actually are. Let's talk about the first one, RAID 0. This is RAID 0. We're doing striping on this RAID. So what are we doing here? Let's say we've got two disks. You've got disk one, you've got disk two. You're now configuring a RAID zero between disk one and disk two. That disk now becomes one disk. So those two disks have now become one larger disk. So for example, disk one is a two terabyte hard drive. Disk two is a two terabyte hard drive. You set them up in a RAID zero. You add these two disks into a RAID zero you've now got a four terabyte hard drive, a much larger disk. That's great. So from, for example, from the operating system side of things, Windows is now gonna see one hard drive that is four terabytes big. But of course on the back end, it's two, two terabyte hard drives configured in a RAID zero. Okay, that's a little bit of an overview there on RAID zero. You're gonna get really good performance out of that, really good read and write speeds. Of course, the negative is, because you've got data now configured across both of these disks, and from the operating system side, it's seen as one disk, if you lose one of those disks, if one of those disks fails, if one of those disks gets accidentally removed or disconnected from a computer, from a server, from a storage device, that RAID is broken, and there's potential data loss. Big, big problem. There's no redundancy, there's no failover, there's nothing like that on a RAID 0. Yes, you're gonna get big performance, but you're gonna have data loss. So you wanna use a RAID 0 if you want great performance, but making sure that the data that's residing on a RAID 0 is non-critical data. Maybe your thing is just performance, 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 but if you lose it, it's not a big deal because we got backups or something else, some other method in place. So that is a RAID 0. RAID 1, same scenario. We've got two hard drives, a two terabyte and a two terabyte hard drive. You now configure these in a RAID 1. What this is gonna do is this is gonna be mirroring the hard drives, yeah? So unlike RAID 0, where you're actually taking both disks and making a larger disk, we've now got two hard drives that are both two terabytes each in a RAID 1 from the operating system side of things, you're only gonna see one hard drive, and that is gonna be two terabytes. Even though there are two disks behind it, it's only gonna see one that is two terabytes. So what's happening is you're now mirroring the data between these two disks. So when something is written, let's say you, you have a new file that is added to one of the hard drives, it copies that to the other hard drive. So both hard drives are always kept the same. They are mirrors, mirror images of each other. You're gonna also get good performance, good read and write out of this, right? But of course, the negative being that, well, you lose the capacity of one of the disks because you're now buying two two terabyte hard drives, but you're only gaining two terabyte hard drive. You're only gaining one two terabyte, that's it. But if one disk fails, not a problem, the other disk continues to operate. So that is actually really, really good. So if you think about it from a redundancy, from a failover perspective, you are covered. You've got two disks, you've got critical data on here. Critical data is loaded onto both hard drives. It's mirrored. A hard drive has failed or gets accidentally disconnected or removed. You don't lose the hard drive because it's been mirrored to the other hard drive. So that is a RAID 1. How about a RAID 5? Now this is the most common RAID type that is used across the industry. RAID 5 is used everywhere. Uh, it's called, uh, it uses this thing called the parity, parity data, parity bits, that has been spread across all of the hard drives. Now you need at least three hard drives for a RAID 5. And what this is actually doing is it's writing data to all three hard drives, but there's also parity data being written to all three hard drives. And it has failover of a single disk. So you could have three 
you could have five, you could have 10 hard drives. Let's say you've got five hard drives that are two terabytes each in a RAID 5, and one of the hard drives fails. Doesn't matter which one, because this parity data has been written across all five, I don't actually lose any data. But the only thing is you have failover for one disk and you're actually using up one disk's worth of capacity. So if I've got five hard drives that are two terabytes each, two, four, six, eight, 10, theoretically I've got 10 terabytes worth of data, but it's in a RAID 5, so I'm only gonna have eight terabytes worth of data available to me in this scenario in a RAID 5, but I've got the failover of one disk. Now the only thing with RAID 5 is that you have a little bit of a performance hit. Read isn't too bad, but write is a little bit of a performance hit when you are configuring in a RAID 5. The other consideration is when you lose a disk, if you have a hard drive that needs to be replaced, it's died or whatever for whatever reason, you take that hard drive out. Your RAID 5 continues to operate, that is great. You then risk another disk failing, then you lose everything of course, right? Because you only got one failover. So that is a RAID 5, okay? So you've got a parity spread across all of the disks. You're not gonna have as good performance, but you do have redundancy. We then move into RAID 6. This is now double parity. Similarly to RAID 5, RAID 5 you had one disk failure. You had a parity spread across all of them, taking up one disk essentially. A RAID 6 is similar to RAID 5, the same concept, but it's now two disks are allocated. Two disks can fail on a RAID 6 and you won't have any data loss. All right, so think about a RAID 5. We said if one disk fails, you then need to go and replace it. And there's a chance of a failure, etc., etc., for another disk. Well, a RAID 6, if a disk fails, well, you're still okay because you still have the possibility of another further disk failure. Again, you're gonna take a performance hit. RAID 6 generally performs more poor than a RAID 5 configuration, but you've got chances of two fails of disks before you have any data issues. And then the last one that we're gonna talk about is a RAID 10. Now this is not really RAID 10, it's actually a RAID 1-0. So it's actually a combination of RAID 1 and a combination of RAID 0. So you're taking the advantages of the striping and the mirroring in one RAID configuration. So let's use an example where I've got four hard drives. Well, two and two of those hard drives are now going to be mirrored, but then overall, they're all striped together. So you're gonna take advantage of a larger hard drive pool because the disks are gonna be bigger and they're also got redundancy built into it because they're being mirrored between each other. So the advantage of RAID 10 is, in my opinion, is the best option of this, okay? You're gonna get excellent read-write performance out of this and I would say a RAID 10 is, is something that you would use for critical, critical, critical data that needs high performance. So a lot of places will use RAID 10 for databases, for data warehouses, things like that, that have a lot of data, a lot of processing, will use a RAID 10. The only negative that I would see is, well, you need more disks. You need to pay more money because you need more disks and you need more physical space to put in all of these extra disks, but it may be worth it. So that's a RAID 10. So that's it. We talked about RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10. There's an overview of RAID. Again, as I said, this is a basic introduction and hopefully we gave you the skills to understand a little bit more around what RAID is. So that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. I really, really appreciate it. Please do what you do on the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, checking out my other videos as well so that you don't miss out on anything that I'm releasing on all things tech. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.